I too would wish to recognize some of our guests here with us this morning. Specifically, the Prime Minister and his cabinet colleagues, and more particularly, the Deputy Prime Minister, Sam Conder, and his dear wife, and uh, the Senior Minister, the Honorable Timothy Harris. Your Lordship, Justice Errol Thomas. The Speaker, Curtis Martin. My dear friend, Sir Cuthbert Sebastian, long-standing friend, family friends. Our most illustrious past Governor General, Sir Probin Innes and his wife, Lady Innes. Sir James Carlyle, former Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda. And uh, Your Excellency Paul Brumel, High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to St. Kitts and Nevis. And of of course, His Honor, Eustace John and Mrs. John. And uh, generally the diplomatic and consular corps among whom I have many dear friends and their ladies as well. And all others who have joined us this morning for this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, I just took two oaths in your presence, the oath of office and the oath of allegiance. I will be faithful, true, and loyal to my oaths. I come into the office that I now assume by the wish of the government, the consensus of the people, and the will of God. God sought me and providentially prepared and brought me to this day on which he is sending me as his servant at this specific period in the history of our young nation and the life of our proud people, whom I have been given the great honor and privilege to serve. I am fervently determined to serve wholeheartedly without hesitation, prevarication, or mental reservation, so help me God. I will serve with humility, humanity, meekness, and selflessness. I will not seek my own good. I will seek the good of all of my fellow countrymen and countrywomen. On that you can depend, for God has promised to help me to do the task which he has entrusted to me, and I will rely on his promise. Thus, I cannot fail. Thank you. 
I am told that there are people who quietly take oaths and quickly forget them. I will remember my oaths. With God's help, I will not forget them. The oaths will be my guide and compass in office. They will help me to follow the path of truth and principle. The festival of the nativity that we just celebrated reminds us that the angel and a multitude of heavenly hosts were praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. But down through the ages, there are men in every generation who do not accept the heavenly message of peace and goodwill toward men and whose thoughts and actions are contrary to both. There is a high degree of accord between what the oaths require of the office holder and what God requires of man. It is the unfaltering quality and practice of justice, mercy, and humility in our relationship with God and in our dealing with one another. It is my declared commitment to seek always to give unsullied ethical service to the country and to each and every citizen and resident. I am taking office 14 days after St. Kitts and Nevis was classified a high-income country with the national kudos that that upgrade will attract and the challenges that will attend it. St. Kitts and Nevis is one of four CARICOM countries classified as high-income countries. The other three CARICOM countries are the Bahamas, Barbados, and Trinidad and Tobago. That elevated status is a supremely excellent reality. Yes, you may. Our citizens who love our native land the best, and I hope that we call a song, will recommit ourselves to work even more industriously, assiduously, and unceasingly to maximize the benefits, privilege, and advantages of the new national status, to minimize the disconcerting challenges in the short to medium term, and eliminate them over the long term. I will play my full part in that grand design. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our land, our nation, St. Kitts and Nevis, to build, to make it and the people prosperous and safe. We have come this far, but there is farther to go. We are builders of legacy and history. To aid us in this noble task, each is given a bag of tools and a book of rules. And each must make, ere life is flown, a stumbling block or stepping stone. Let us spend a moment in silent reflection. Now, in silence, let each one of us ask himself this question. What have I been building? 
If the answer to that question is a stepping stone, then continue to build with renewed energy, effort, and enthusiasm. If the answer is a stumbling block, then stop building straight away. A stepping stone is in the country's interests, but contrary-wise, a stumbling block is not in anyone's interest, neither the country nor our countrymen. It disturbs the peace and discourages goodwill toward men. Let each one of us from this day strive to serve our country and not strain to serve himself. With God's help, I will. Thank you.